Hey everyone, David here, Texas Horns Football. Wanted to jump on here, give my thoughts on the 45-38 loss to LSU over the weekend and definitely want to know what you think about the game and some of the individual performances in the game. So definitely drop your comments below. Don't forget to give the video a like, share it out, and subscribe. So 45-38, awesome, fun game. In a lot of ways, a frustrating game. But overall, the way I kind of processed everything was for Texas, from the Texas point of view, I really think it was kind of a tale of, of two halves. The first half, especially the first quarter, was pretty rough. I think in a lot of ways, Texas sort of gift-wrapped gift and gave LSU uh, the first quarter. You know, Texas chose to leave some points off the board uh, by going for it a couple times on fourth down. One play, obviously, was a drop touchdown pass by Keontae Ingram. Could have been a little bit better throw by Sam, but Ingram definitely got turned around. He had hands on the ball, and he was even bringing the ball down and um, just couldn't secure it and just flat out dropped it. So dropped six points there. But, you know, again, going for it a couple times on fourth down, not getting it. And, you know, I think going for that one time makes a lot of sense. Um, roll the dice. It's a close game. The offense is moving the ball, so why not try it? Doing it again, I think, is a little arrogant on the play calling part. But, you know, I appreciate the aggressiveness, but you definitely don't want to not get points on the board against a great team like LSU. And so, you know, just kind of looking at a seven-point loss against one of the best teams in the country, basically Texas lost a close game against a team that was a little bit better than them. You know, so you play that game ten times, LSU or Texas probably wins six of those games. Um, Overall, I think that on paper, that's supposedly the best defense that Texas is going to face all year. And aside from most of the first quarter, um, I think the offense moved the ball really, really well on LSU. There's a lot being made, and rightfully so, about the Texas defense allowing 470 yards of pass, you know, passing yards, four touchdowns, whereas the LSU defense allowed 400 passing yards, um, I think more than 530 total yards, and four passing touchdowns plus the rushing touchdown by Sam. So, you know, not a great performance by the LSU defense either. Um, you know, going into that, looking at that first half, had you told me that LSU was going to score 13 points, most of the first half, I would have thought that was a massive victory for Texas. So, you know, definitely not all bad defensive performance by Texas. I think the difference in the game was LSU scoring the 22 points in the fourth quarter. Um, that obviously was just too much to overcome, and it was too much for the offense to overcome, um, as we saw. So, you know, LSU scored that late touchdown in the first half. Uh, I believe there was under a minute to go to make the score 20-7. to seven. So, you know, like I said, had you told me that LSU was going to score 13 most of the first half, I would have said awesome. Had you told me that they, before the game, had you said that LSU was going to score 45 points, I would have thought, well, that's their game. Uh, that's to their benefit because... What Texas did not want to do is try to get in a shootout with them, and that's what ended up happening in the second half, uh, particularly the fourth quarter. So had you told me that Texas was going to score 38 points, I probably would have said that I thought Texas would could win that. Um, going into the game, I said that if LSU was going to score 35 or more, so around the mid-30s or more, then that's their game. Uh, they're probably going to win that. I thought Texas would have had to have held them below 35, 34 points. And for most of the first half, it looked like that's kind of what was happening, but it was the offense that couldn't converge or complete their drives. So 
I think that was flip-flopped in the second half. The offense looked a lot better, uh, but it was the defense that was giving up more and more big plays, big chunks uh, uh, on the passing game. Credit to LSU's passing game. Joe Burrow looked great. Um, I think Texas did a pretty good job in the first half of getting some pressure on him and disrupting him. And then LSU had three receivers with more than 120 yards receiving. So, like I said, credit on, on their part. And, you know, yeah, the overall the Texas um, defensive backs, the pass defense, had definitely had a rough night, um, especially... Um, especially right before the half and then, and then, and then through the second half. Um, but the linebackers played pretty well, but kind of like what we saw in week one against Louisiana Tech, uh, a lot of similar style offense, just the quick passing, um, a lot of receivers running you know different routes and just kind of finding you know finding that open spot uh, in the defensive backfield. Still think Texas has some issues uh, with the cornerbacks on on one on one matchups. Uh, Jalen Green had some moments, but also you know also got got beat a- enough significantly. Um, Chris Brown showed up again, had had some good plays. Brandon Jones had some good plays, also uh, also lost some matchups though. Uh, I know Brandon Jones was covering on one of those touchdown passes uh, where his guy scored. And then Joseph Asai with another interception. That was cool to see. Um, he's stepping up and just making play after play after play. So he, he's going to be a beast. Um, you know, hopefully I, I think what we see is from, from here on out more pressure from the front six on defense. Hopefully we see that. Um, on the offensive side of the ball, thought Sam struggled in the first quarter but then kind of got in rhythm and got going. I think there was too much pressure put on Sam overall. Um, I'm, I don't understand why Keontae Ingram only had four carries in the first half. Would have liked to have seen him um, get some more carries, maybe even some draw plays, or at least get the ball in his hands uh, a little bit more. It seemed like in the first half, the Texas offense and the offensive play calling just looked like they were a little bit in panic mode and seemed like they were calling plays and running plays as if they were already three touchdowns behind and it was in the fourth quarter. Didn't really understand that, um, but it took a a little while to get going. Devin DuVernay had a fantastic game. I'm not sure if that guy's even capable of dropping a pass. He was amazing in the slot. Um, that was a major concern with me going into the season is replacing the production of LJ Humphrey and just the style of player he was, being kind of a big body, almost receiver slash tight end that Sam obviously counted on and loved to go to and, and went to in critical situations, but Devin has filled that tremendously. He's just a different style of player. He's He uses his quickness and speed to get separation and space where LJ just kind of outbodied linebackers and safeties but that was cool to see um, he had a he had a big touchdown run I believe it was 44 yards on a um, on a three and two play where um, Cade Brewer kind of walled off one of the defenders and Devin was able to kind of run his route underneath that uh, on a pretty quick pass and, and then just took off downfield so that was cool to see uh, um, You know, it was nice to see the offense be able to trade blows with LSU. That's just not the game that Texas could, was able to overcome. Uh, The back and forth uh, shootout, the defense just was not able to come up with, with a big stop. So, you know, there's been a lot of comments about, you know, had... Kante Ingram not drop that touchdown, that would have, you know, made up the seven-point difference. Um, had Texas, you know, made one of the fourth down conversions, that would have made it up. Maybe they should have gone for a field, uh, field goal there. Um, Cameron Dicker did have a 47-yard field goal, which was, you know, which can't be, I think can't be understated. That was cool to see. He helped keep Texas in the game there when, when really every, every score mattered at that point. 
Um, the final touchdown that LSU scored on defense, um, that was, I believe, third and 17. And Texas rolled the dice and really brought the house. To, um, they went all in on pressure. Joe, Bur Joe Burrow, I thought, did a great job by stepping up and almost kind of had to do a slight jump pass to find, I believe it was Jefferson, their receiver, who was kind of streaking back across the field. It looked like... It looked like Caden Stearns was trailing him, and Stearns had position on him, tried to make the tackle, and just missed it. And that was that was really the the only guy that could have made the tackle on Jefferson. And then he takes it down the sidelines uh, to score um, to put LSU up by I believe they went up by 14 at that point. And then Texas came back and scored uh, another touchdown, and then the onside kick where where Colin Johnson had a good shot of it on the sideline. I just think he was just out of space and, and couldn't actually couldn't actually pull it in. He actually dove and, and almost had it. And I, I think Texas could have had a legitimate shot then. So, you know, overall frustrating, but still, you know, still I, I think should give fans a lot of confidence. Uh, overall, the way Texas fought hard, didn't give up. Definitely some stuff that needs to be fix, fixed on defense. Um, other individual performances, Jake Smith, true freshman receiver with his first touchdown in his Texas career. Um, that was his only catch, but a 20-yard touchdown there. Great throw by Sam to, to stick the ball in there. Uh, Rashawn Johnson, uh, true freshman, converted quarterback to running back. He had over 40 total yards. Uh, he had a better yards per carry than Keontae Ingram even. I thought he looked pretty natural at running back. Uh, pretty impressive. Um, he's got quickness. He's got burst. And he runs hard. He runs with a bad attitude, which is cool to see. And with the running back uh, group being so thin right now, that's, that's confident to see. Obviously, the coaches are confident in, in, in giving him some significant touches. Um, I, I, we saw him more than I thought we would, which, you know, that should give you a lot of confidence about his ability and the confidence that, that the coaches have in him. Um, so that was cool to see. Um, hopefully more of these running backs get healthy though. Even Daniel Young, you know, Whittington's probably still out for another four weeks, which, which is still going to suck. Hopefully he, you know, he gets back, uh, by the time, by the time uh, Oklahoma uh, comes into Dallas on October 12th, Texas does have a bye in between now and then. So, what else? Just looking from here on out, I think, you know, I like going down to Houston to play Rice. Obviously, you know, that needs to be a, a, a comfortable win. But just sort of getting back on track and just kind of imposing your will on Rice. And then... We've got two teams, Oklahoma State and West Virginia, that Texas lost to last year. So there's some opportunity there to not only kind of get back on track and, you know, still feel pretty confident about a hard-fought, really close game against LSU, but also get some revenge on two teams that, that beat you last year um, and then take some control back from Oklahoma State because they've, they're 4-0 against Texas over the past four years. So some, some good opportunities there, I think, to get back on track. And then, like I said earlier, if that's the best defense that Texas is supposedly going to face all year, man, that's got to give you a lot of confidence uh, going, going here, on, here on out. Not that some of these other teams can't pose some matchup problems and not that, that some of these other defense, defenses can't come up with something to shut something down in the Texas offense. Because if a defense wants to, they can sell out on just completely stopping the run um, and, and, and going somewhat one-dimensional. But, you know, I, I think that definitely gives me a lot of confidence. I'm going to be interested to see what LSU, how LSU does for the rest of the season, um, you know, with that kind of revamped offense and how that's going to fare uh, in the uh, in the SEC, so that's going to be going to be pretty interesting to see. Um, what else stood out? Um, Brennan Eagles, uh, an, another good game by him. 
Um, you know, LSU had two or, or three receivers with over 100 yards. Texas has had two receivers with over 100 yards with Devin DuVernay and Brennan Eagles. Um, he had a great touchdown, a great catch, a contested catch on the sidelines where he just kind of took it away and, and, and ran the rest, of, the rest of the way untouched. So he looked good. Um, you know, I, I think Sam looked really good for three quarters. Uh, I just think he struggled there in that first quarter. I thought Sam's running decisions were, were pretty good. Uh, he didn't seem to be forcing anything in the, in the run game. He seemed to kind of take what was there and, and, and make the best of it. I just don't want to see Sam being the leading rusher and also throwing the ball 40 plus times. That's not the formula of, of I think, what the Texas offense wants to do. Um, I don't think I've ever seen as many cramps on one defense as I did with LSU. It seemed like their, their cramping issues were perfectly timed when Texas would get some momentum, you know, whatever. Um, I just found it funny that no one on the LSU offense was having cramping issues. I don't know. Maybe there's a completely different conditioning program for the defense and the offense, whatever. But, um, you know, that was... That happened um, pretty often, which was which was pretty suspect. But you know, whatever. Um, you know, I, overall frustrating, but still, still gives me a lot of confidence. You know, uh, with overall how the team f- uh, fared, I I, I think I, I look at this loss more on the coaching and, and play calling, not that the. Texas players weren't physically prepared or mentally tough in the game. I think that was there completely. Um, you know, when you have multiple guys step up and, and, and looking good and making plays, Brennan Eagles, Devin DuVernay, um, Rashawn Johnson making the most of his opportunities as a true freshman, Chris Brown stepped up, you know, Joseph Asai stepped up. So, you know, a lot of uh, a, a lot of good individual individual performances. You know, go back a few years under Charlie Strong, and you know if you guys remember, this was an offense that just looked like they couldn't get out of their own way. You know, it looked like someone running in quicksand. Uh, it looked like a team that was looking around for other players to to step up and make a play. You just don't see that with this team. You know, this team, I think, is definitely more mentally tough. And also keep in mind, this is the second game of Tom Herman's third season. You know, so we've only had two years of Tom Herman um, in what he's been able to do with this program, mostly with recruits and players that aren't his. But, you know, this is kind of that year where all of that kind of converges and comes together for him. And, you know, overall, I, I, I think the direction of everything is ahead of schedule coming off of, uh, you know, a, a bowl win in his first season over Missouri, a Sugar Bowl win over Georgia with a win over Oklahoma in the regular season last year, and then a really close loss against an LSU team that I think is just a little bit better than Texas right now. So, you know, still in Texas' hands to control everything. I think they dropped to 12th in the AP. So over the next, you know, month. Uh, we've got Rice, Oklahoma State, West Virginia. There's also a bye in there. So we've got four full weeks. You know, definitely can 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 get back up, you know, into the top 10, no question. Big game against Oklahoma, obviously. And then, um, you know, we'll see from there. So those are my thoughts, guys. I really appreciate it. Um, don't forget to subscribe. Like I said, drop your comments below. Um, uh, what you thought about overall the game, the frustrating parts, the, the, the parts that gave you a lot of confidence, and then some of the individual performances that you um, really liked, that, that really stood out to you. But like I said, appreciate it. Go check us out on Facebook, uh, Texas Horns Football. We've got more than 53,000 Longhorns fans on there. A lot of great conversation and connection on there. So we'll see you next time on the next video. Don't forget to subscribe and always appreciate you. Horns up. Hook them.